Hi, I'm Miss Sermons from North Atlanta High School. I teach U.S. History and AP Human Geography, so primarily a social studies teacher. And today I'm going to show you some of my favorite things about Magic School and some of their new and upcoming features. One of my favorite things about Magic School is that you can browse a lot of their magic tools. These are all AI tools um, and they do a million different things. It's very user friendly for anyone who has little to no experience with using AI, whether it be in the classroom or for planning purposes. And some of my favorite ones that I've been using a lot just from starting out a couple of months ago is the multiple choice assessments. You can do this using, you can create these using uh, standards like the Georgia Standards of Excellence. You can change grade level. Um, so I teach an EOC course with US history. So we'll say that I want 10 questions and I just type in what I want to use here. Now you wanna make sure that you're specific whenever you're giving it information because it does pull this information from the internet. So for AP courses, for example, um, if you're using the CED, you wanna make sure that you specify, please use the CED from 2020. That way it knows what document to pull your questions from. So let's actually do one from AP Human Geography. So I want it to be AP Human Geography, Unit 7, Topic 7.1, using the 2020 CED. And I chose 10 questions. For my AP classes, I always do 12th grade because they are college level courses. And then you just press generate and it creates it for you. Um, and these are based off of those standards. It gives you the answer key. And when you have the paid version, you can export this to a Google Doc, a Google Form, a Microsoft Form, a Microsoft Word. Um, if you do not have the paid version, then you just simply go to copy and you can paste it into whatever document you would like to use it from. And some of the questions like this one, which of the following best describes the concept of state in the context of Unit 7.1? And it has to be that specific because state can be a million other things, but it even goes down to subnational levels. And all I gave it was the standard and where to pull the standard from. So I love that for just quick formative assessments. Um, sometimes I have to search for questions. And so that one's been really helpful. Something else that has been helpful since for the social studies department, we are currently going through a textbook adoption, but we have not had textbooks in a while. And so it's hard to pull informational texts that are exactly standard aligned to what you need. And so you can generate informational texts and you implement whatever it is so this one, informational text, what do I need it to be? For history, I would need literary nonfiction. How long do I want it to be? And then what I've done in the past is paste the standard here and it will um, pull out all the vocabulary words from that standard and make a paragraph about it. Um, you can make it as long as three pages and I've gone through and compared it and it does directly align to the state standards um, pretty well. But for this one, I usually copy and paste the standard directly in instead of asking it to pull the standard from the internet. One of the other ones that I really like is the YouTube video questions generator. This one, you just copy and paste a link from a YouTube video and it'll generate questions, multiple choice questions that can follow along. Um, you can even change what type of questions you would like, how long you would like them to be. That one's really easy to use. This, I do not write IEPs, however, I have used this to um, help students with like finding coping mechanisms or things that they might want to um, explore. So you just type in like what type of disability category it is. And then you put in information about the student and it will generate ideas for you for student behavior management um, to help them. So I'm not sure how this would align to IEP requirements for the state of Georgia because I'm not a um, special education teacher. But I do know that it has helped in my classroom with just having conversations with students about things that can help them. Another thing that it does is student work feedback. So there are a few different um, resources like AI resources out there that 
will give student work feedback, but this is all in one place. So this is one of the things that you can also launch to students. So I'll show that one in just a second, because there are several of these that you can push out for students to use, um, and then you don't have to go through and upload everything. Some of the other teacher-facing ones that I've used as well, um, AI-resistant assignments. So you take an assignment that you already have, and this works best for um, like short essays, short answer questions, something that your students would try to prop, pop into a chat GPT maybe and get an answer really quickly. So you give, um, you paste your prompt here and then it will generate a new prompt that uses vocabulary that makes it difficult for AI um, chatbots to create a response for. Um, and it does that just by like making sure that they include examples and things like that. So this has been really successful. I used this on an assignment a few weeks ago. Something that I always struggle with as a teacher is writing parent emails, like thought out parent emails. And so Magic School actually has a tool where it will generate an email. And it basically, you can do one of two things. You can either paste the email you're responding to or you can just type in what you want to communicate. I usually do the what you want to communicate response um, just so it helps me. And then I go in and I edit it. So I never send an AI generated email straight to a parent. I always edit it to make sure that I have the correct information in there, etc. But it just helps me. It's almost like giving your students sentence starters um, to help them. This is a great way to um, to help you <laughs> generate emails and kind of takes just a few minutes off of your time there if you're having to type out a well thought email. In my EOC course, we have been using this DOK question generator. And what this generator does is I'm going to pull up the Georgia standards. I'll pull those up now. So Georgia standards of excellence, U.S. history, We're at the end of the year, so let's go to one of our last standards. Let's do the this standard here. So I will paste the standard in. And it will generate DOK 1, 2, 3, and 4 level um, questions. I know that Brisk does this as well. But again, this is just everything all in one resource. And it structures them based off of that content. So what are some major challenges faced by recent presidents, including events such as et cetera, et cetera. And then it just builds on that. Compare and contrast would be a DOK level 2. Um, investigate how those response shaped foreign and domestic policies. Um, and so you can use these to review for your students. You can use them as um, your I can statements. There are a lot of things that you can use these DO level, DOK level um, questions for. Something that we've done is put our students in groups and give each of them a DOK level question from level one, two, three, and four. And then they have to go through and answer those. And so it's scaffolding that information from basic vocabulary up to analyzing, designing, creating something at that DOK level four. Now, there are a, a ton of other things that you can use in Magic School. And it can sort them up here for you. Planning. These are for teachers. These are for you to play in things. Multi-step assignments. SEL lessons generating content for your students to use. I've used the vocabulary list generator. It's been great. It gives you the vocabulary list and the definitions. Um, vocabulary based texts. So what I did was I created the list and then I took the list that it gave me and created a text. And then it gave my students an academic text that I could then level because you can then ask the um, in the chat, you can ask them to 
once you generate, you can ask it to level those at a higher level or a lower level if you need to. Um, I do want to explore our magic student. So magic school is the teacher facing um, platform and magic student is the student facing platform. So for students, you will launch a room and I'll show you how to do that. But these are some of the ones that students can use and it's to help them with assignments or to help them explore ideas. Um, and I had some of my students do some silly things and I'll show you what they did. So you go launch room and I have this room from today that my AP students were playing around with. So um, this is ex an expand on my idea tool. So I can click on it and it will show me what she did, right? So she has two things that she did here. She did a character chat bot and then she did expand on my idea. So her character chat bot, we just finished agriculture a couple of weeks ago. And so we typed in our historic figure was Norman Burlog. And so it pulls this up. Greetings, young scholar. I'm ready to engage with you. And then the student can then chat with this person and ask them questions, this chat bot. And it also generates possible questions for them to help them get started. So they can either click on the pre-generated one or they can type in their own questions. Um, this one, expand on my idea. So you give them, I have to do this. What's a way that I can present this? Um, and I love this because when we give students choices um, to take ownership of their own learning, they usually create these amazing presentations of their knowledge. And so the expand on my idea just says, hey, I have to make a presentation on this topic. What's something that I could do? And this gave them, you can create an interactive timeline or a character comparison chart or make a modern day adaption. A silly one that one of my students did. She said, the sermons, I didn't know that you were gonna show this. So they created a skit. <laughs> and in their skit, they were like, we're gonna do it on agriculture. And this is who they describe their characters as. Um, and it just goes through and they're walking through the skit based off of the character descriptions that it gave them. So it's just a fun way to kind of get them talking about ideas. And then research assistant. So I created this one to help um, with my students. They just finished a sustainability design where they redesigned the city of Atlanta using some sustainable design initiatives that are outlaid in their um, AP Human Geography standards. So I took the prompt that I originally gave them that said, redesign the city of Atlanta using sustainable design initiatives. And then it gave them all of these ideas. Now for what project they had to do, this is simply something that would have just helped them get started. It does not go into detail about everything that I asked them to include which is good because they still have to go and do work on top of what you've already given them um, or from what the AI um, gives them. So I love the student facing platform. You can, if you launch a room, I'm gonna go back and show you how to launch. So we go launch new room and you can uh, decide what tools you want your students to see. So if you just want them using one type of tool, then you only use that tool. So you can decide what type of tools they want or you want them to use. You can add or remove them at any point throughout the, throughout the time that the room is um, live. So you have a student chat bot. So there's a chat bot for teachers and a chat bot for students that are aimed towards them. Research assistants, translators, coding assistant, literary devices. It just goes on and on for all the different things that they can do. So let's say I'm going to choose. I like my students to analyze data for practice FRQs, right? So I want them to analyze data, but I also want them to review for their test that's coming up. So I can add a study bot. So once they finish their assignment, then they can go in and do, um, do some studying. You can also, here's another one. I like the five questions. They can get feedback on their writing. So let's just launch this with a few of these. What grade level? Let's say they're 11th grade, right? I launch room. 
it generates a QR code and a code that they can type in. And once the students join, their names will pop up here and you can edit the room, add, remove any of the tools that you want them to use. You can also monitor what they're doing, which is what I did here. So actions, I can view their output, I can view their join information, I can remove them from the room, I can lock what they're doing, I can pause what they're doing. Um, and this is a great way to monitor if they're using AI responsibly. Um, AI is, is part of our society um, at this point, and it's our responsibility to teach our students how to use these resources responsibly. And using the launch to students and the student rooms in Magic School is a great way for us to monitor how they're using AI and direct them in a way that benefits them. Um, because AI is meant to make our lives a little bit easier and why not help our students make things easier as well. I think it has allowed my students to expand on ideas that they already had that they maybe felt a little stuck in. Um, yeah, our students have anywhere from four to six classes a day and so this helps them narrow in exactly what they need to be doing in that 90 minute class period. The last thing I wanna talk about is your output history. So it will show you everything that you've done. And once you have the paid feature, you can re-export these to anything that, um, you know, Word doc, Microsoft Forms, Google Forms, um, et cetera. As always, there are gonna be pros and cons with using AI in your classroom. And so as long as we're focusing on making sure that we are helping our students use these in responsible ways, um, and we do that by modeling it for them. So always model these tools for your students, show them how to do it, encourage them to use their creativity. And always, always, um, we like to follow the 80-20 rule whenever we are using AI, right? 20% um, of it's going to be generated, but you need to look through at least 80% of that document to ensure that what's being created is aligned to what you need. And you can send it through AI again to double check it, to reread it, um, to change whatever you need to change. But use the tools to your advantage. And overall, I think that this is a one-stop shop for um, whatever we might need in our classroom, for whatever subject um that you teach right, thank you guys for listening again i am kelsey sermons and i teach at north atlanta high school